Hello there Libras, welcome to your tarot reading. So you have some very strong, powerful spiritual messages that are coming through. And um, I feel like the theme for this month is about, you know, things have a way of sorting themselves out, of working themselves out. All the knots will be untangled and uh, all the things will be rightfully put in their place. People will be will, will learn not to overstep their boundaries and when things are just you know left to their own devices I feel like you know they have a, a way of naturally working themselves out okay and so when I was shuffling out this spread for you I saw two images that sort of uh, reaffirm this the same theme okay that the universe has a way of recalibrating and so we can try to fix situations, we can try to, you know, push against the tides and, and to make something better, to change a situation or to, um, I want to say like even trying to assert our influence in a, an environment. But I feel like, you know, in, in the greater scheme of things, there is divine intervention that is going to right a situation. So I saw two images. Um, and they're really good images. I, I really like this because I, I definitely feel like there's a balance in the universe that, that can be restored if things are actually left alone, okay? So I feel like the theme for this month is, um, I want to say not to do anything and just let things sort themselves out. That's what it feels like to me. And the two images reaffirm this. So first of all, um, I see this scene, it's a very, uh, it's, it's almost like uh, the slums, okay? And it, it seems like Thailand, it, it looks like a scene from, from like a Southeast Asian economy. So um, I see this little boy, he's sitting on a stool and he's under a street light. So it's like, you know, the break of dawn, the sun just came out and he's hungry okay it's early in the morning he's he looks very ragged like his clothes have holes in it he looks like he's about he's probably like seven or eight but he looks kind of malnourished and very stunted like short and and just you know he's hungry and he's looking at this street vendor she has like a huge frying pan and she's frying up things so that she can sell it uh, for 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 people to eat during breakfast okay so it's like the breakfast rush hour everyone's trying to get to work and this kid he's he's hungry he's poor he doesn't have the money so he's looking longingly at uh, this lady she's like a perfect stranger on the street she's cooking something he's smelling it and he's just like you know, I don't, I don't see him like begging or, or, or making it known that he's hungry. But like, she serves some of her customers, and then she looks at him, and she's just like, she puts some of whatever she's cooking. I, I feel like she's frying beignets or something, some some type of a dough, some type of a snack, and she puts it in a, a little paper pouch that she makes from just regular, you know, uh, paper and she gives it to him, okay? And so, what's really interesting is I don't hear anything in this scene. And I, I don't hear any thoughts, I don't see any feelings, I just saw whatever the, the image depicts, which is really rare. Usually there are like, uh, you know, words associated with it, but I, I feel like the, the scene is very clear. Um, and from the vendor's perspective, I don't even, you know, hear like, Oh, that boy, I feel so bad for him. Let me give him, you know, these um, beignets. I, I don't even hear that. She just does it almost as if she was divinely guided to do it. She just does it because it's in her nature or it's in her instinct. Uh, or it's just, you know, her maternal instinct kicking in where she wants to, you know, where she feels bad. I don't even get that. I just feel like... I have this, these are, you know, what I have. This boy doesn't have it, so I'm gonna give it to him. It's like a balancing act that happens in a very natural, unimposing way, okay? Nobody told her to do it, she just happens to do it. The boy never expressed that he was hungry, but he's looking at it and he could benefit from it. So it's gonna go to the person that, that 
needs it. So I definitely feel like that that context. I don't even want to say the word charity, because I feel like it can sound so condescending in in certain situations. I feel like it's not an act of charity. It's just an act of giving and receiving reciprocity. Okay. So that's the first scene. The second scene. So once she gives him these、um, this package of beignets, it zooms out to the scene in the background, and I just see like a lot of motorcycles, a lot of cars. So it feels to me like、um, a developing country. There aren't a lot of like、um, you know nice cars on the road, like luxury cars, but there are a lot of motorcycles, a lot of like just big trucks. Okay,、um, they they look a little bit rickety, and so. There's a lot of pollution, just smoke emitting from these motorcycles, from these um, um, commuters, and it, all the smoke and all this everything is just like emitted into the atmosphere. So there's so much like、uh, pollution. There's just so much dense fog, and it, it's really uncomfortable, and it feels very, very stifling. So just Im- imagine, like you know, this is、uh, the morning commute, the morning rush hour. And it's already the morning time, and it just feels really hot and 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 very stuffy and just、um, congested. Okay, congested like physically in terms of traffic, and then congested because you can't breathe. And so what happens is、um, all of that builds up, and then it, it builds up into the atmosphere, and then the rain comes. Okay, this this massive pouring of rain from the sky. And、uh, as most of you, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I see this a lot in my travels. In a lot of countries that I've traveled to,、um, whenever the rains come,、um, people just you know stay indoors, okay? And so the commute commuters they they find a place to hide out, okay? They can't really get anywhere far without getting drenched in this torrential rain if they're riding a motorcycle, for example. So they find a place to find、uh, refuge. And then the traffic stops. This boy he goes back into wherever he came from, and the vendors, you know, they they stop conducting business, and everything is just、uh, calm, and and the the congestion and and the pollution just stops, just ceases. Activity just ceases because this downpouring of rain just comes in and you know wipes everything clean. Okay, so. That's what I'm sensing. It, it's almost like the the flood that basically wipes off everything that is unclean, unsavory,、um, unappealing from the earth, and then the world begins again. That's what it feels like to me. It's very biblical, but it's kind of weird because it's、um, the context is you know we're looking at a different location. We're looking at like a developing economy, and we're looking at an area that is、uh, ridden by pollution, and just the throngs of humanity, and just you know the the impact that they're having on the environment, but also、um, the impact that they're having in general, like the noise pollution, the the physical pollution, the traffic, the congestion, all of that is wiped clean. Okay, and so let me talk to you first about、um, the first image, and then I'll go into the second image. Okay.、Um, I feel like there's definitely、um, there there's definitely some divine intervention,、um, divine like actions or some spiritual energy that's guiding things from behind the scenes. Okay, and、um, first of all, this card I have here the Six of Pentacles, and the Six of Pentacles is usually like、um, good karma coming back around. Okay, what goes around comes around, the boomerang effect. Okay. Things being calibrated, things being evened out. Whoever has been working, you know, really diligently, really hard,、um, is going to be compensated. Whoever has been、uh, slipping up,、um, manipulating things, manipulating situations,、uh, doing very little, trying to get by, you know, like.、Um, So I, I feel like whoever deserves something will get their due justice, okay? And this can be good or this can be bad. Usually, this is in a very good context, but I also feel like what goes around comes around, okay? So it, it's a a very immense karmic effect that is kind of like permeating this entire reading. So I feel like you're you're going to be seeing these things、uh, rectified. You're going to be seeing things. 
kind of like put in their place, people put in their place for the month of November because there's some divine karmic justice happening behind the scenes, right? And um, it's linked up here with the emperor. And the emperor in this situation, in this context, it is somebody that is working behind the scenes, like possibly a, um, a person that has passed away, like a beloved, you know, paternal, very strong paternal figure that is working behind the scenes in your favor, okay? But then again, uh, the emperor is very fair and is very just. So this is an emperor that is not, um, that doesn't discriminate, okay? He sees the action and he uh, dishes out the rewards according to the actions that he sees. So if you've been doing your due diligence and working hard, you're going to be handsomely rewarded for your hard work and your effort. If you've been shying away from responsibilities, clocking in, um, you know, um, late, like coming to work late and then leaving early, I feel like this is all recorded. This is all, you know, written down. This is all documented and you will be getting your just reward. So the month of November then, you know, with this as a foreshadowing, I feel like it is a month. Well, first of all, I just want to say it is a Mercury retrograde period. Okay. And um, Mercury retrograde is going to start tomorrow. Tomorrow's October 31st. And it's going to run through the entire month of November. So the, for the first three months, we're in the midst of the Mercury retrograde period. And the, the last week then is like a, um, a shadow phase, a shadow period as we transition away from or out of that Mercury retrograde period. And what I have noticed with Mercury retrograde, and I feel like this might be even more so for your sign because it comes up in different ways for all the other signs is what I've noticed. And I feel like for you, there's a recalibrating, there's a balancing out of karmic energy. Okay. And so that basically means, um, cover yourself, cover your, cover yourself. Um, whatever you've been doing, if you've been on the up and up, if you've been doing things, you know, ethically and morally, I feel like, you know, you're going to be uh, divinely compensated and divinely, I want to say, uh, recognized for, for all your achievements. If on the other hand, you've been sneaking around, you've been manipulating, you've been lying, cheating, stealing, um, or whatever it is that humans do, um, you're going to get your, your, your justice. Okay. So I, I definitely feel here, this is the month where I think like, um, things come to light where whatever was hidden will be found out whatever actions that have been, you know, like underhanded dealings. Um, uh, I, I'm seeing like, um, I'm seeing a table and I'm seeing hands and like exchanging money, like underhanded dealings or, you know, under the table dealings, things that have not been very ethical or moral, all of these things will be kind of like brought to light. And so choose what side you're on and adjust your actions accordingly. Okay. So that's what I'm sensing here. And, um, so the, the, the first image, like I said, you know, it is not so much about charity, okay? It's about giving back. It's about giving and receiving. It's about a, a seamless process where, you know, on some days, so the, the first scene is with the little boy. He, he's getting like some food from the vendor because, um, you know, he seems hungry and she has extra or she has. So wh whatever that, that situation is, there's a trans transaction. Somebody who has a lot is giving to somebody who doesn't have anything. So it's not an act of charity. I, I don't want to use the word charity, but I feel like it's a flow in energy. It, it's an exchange from somebody who has a lot to somebody who doesn't. Okay. And so this exchange with the six of pentacles, this is sort of like an exchange in order to help a person because we understand innately. We've all been there. We've all been through rough times. We've all been through, you know, peaks and valleys. And we understand what it means to fall on hard times. And we can sympathize and empathize with those who have fallen on hard times. And so we do whatever we can to get them back on their feet. 
Okay. Even if we're not able to like provide them, you know, like a month of salary, even if we're not able to、uh, contribute a, a significant amount of money or resources or food or whatever it is to sustain them、uh, for a long period of time, we do whatever we can in our own capacity to make a situation better for another person. So I feel like what it's What it's、uh, showing me here is a situation where, you know, being able to slip yourself into somebody else's shoes, and to understand what it is that they're dealing with, the 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 struggles that it 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 entails being in their shoes, understanding, you know,、um, I I keep hearing like you know, where people are right now. Is not indicative of the bad choices or the good decisions that they have made. Where they are right now is a very temporary state of being, and so we need to look at the person as to the person that they are right now. What do they need? What can I do to help the situation and make it better for the other person? So it's not about you know casting judgment because I, I do feel like in、uh, in some aspect Libras you guys can be very judgmental, and I feel like you know you're you're very keen on making very balanced, very smart decisions, and so if you're dealing with somebody who hasn't had a track record of making solid, grounded, practical, you know, good decisions. You might not want to associate yourself with them, but what I'm feeling with this reading is it's about understanding things a little bit more, understanding that you know whoever you're dealing with, whatever situation they're in, this is very temporary. It's not indicative of you know all the past decisions coming back to haunt them. It's just looking at this person the way they are right now. What do they need? What do I have that I can part with? To make the situation better for them,、um, and I just want to say, like once again, you know, it's not about charity. It's not about giving to the、uh, underprivileged or you know,、um, the the less fortunate. Okay, because that is that shows like power differentials, and that shows like.、Um, Power dynamics in a way where it's very, it can be very condescending. This is just like understanding the human condition, and as a one human being to another, you know, what can we do to make the situation right? What can we do to make things better? Okay, and so what I I do see is your, I I do feel like you're you're shifting your framework just a little bit. So that you can have this understanding, or that you can see it, and once you see it, you're gonna want to do something about it. You're gonna want to help, and so the the trick is, you know, it, it's not about enabling, or you know, providing a lump sum of resources in order to help this person, like pave the way for this person. It's about what we can do in this moment in time. It doesn't have to be a huge, huge contribution. It just has to be. Something that is realistic and practical that we can do in this present second, this moment in time. I hope that makes sense. I feel like you know I'm spending what 18 minutes just explaining this, and I feel like I don't know why I'm dwelling so much on it. But I feel that's that's the, that's the change in 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 the paradigm shift, okay? And、um, I do sense as well, you know, there's definitely a divine figure working behind the scenes in order to facilitate this change for you, and in order to write all the things, in order to um, um, recalibrate whatever situation that has been very, very unbalanced. I feel like things will be, you know, balanced out. If you are the one, if you are the little boy that has fallen on hard times. I do feel there's some something behind the scenes that's really going to help you. That's really going to push help push you along, and you know, it's like all those peaks and valleys, right? You're going to be operating at your peak, and I do feel like you're being divinely guided along. To, something is facilitating the journey, the the situation for you, and is alleviating stress, is alleviating anxiety, is alleviating、um, a lot of your worries. Okay, so I feel like you know, no, wherever you fall on the spectrum, 
you could be the one physically helping the other person you're divinely guided to help and the universe is speaking to through you to help the other person or you could be the one who is in need of help and there's a stranger coming into the picture to to provide you help that you did not anticipate okay so whatever the situation is it's divinely guided it's um whoever is doing the helping they are getting a divine nudge in order to help the other person and i feel like that's really beautiful because it, it basically means it basically reaffirms that there is a grand design that there is you know uh there's more to this life that there's more to what we're doing that in in some way we are all interconnected okay so I don't want to sound too preachy, but I do feel like this is a very spiritual reading for many of you. And maybe you need this information or this message. I hope it, it resonates with you. So moving on. Um, okay, so the second image, what I'm really drawn to is that, that cloud of pollution, okay? It's like building, 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 and it's stuffy, it's congested, it's uncomfortable, it's hard to breathe in. There might have been an environment that can be very difficult to be in. So I have here the Ten of Swords. Um, I feel for many of you, this might be like a financial situation where everyone is like looking out for themselves, okay? Um, I, I feel like opportunists. I feel people who are like... Um, it's like dipping their hands in a pie so it's like everyone is all out for themselves everyone is looking out for number one everyone is scrambling everyone is trying to see how fast and how much they can get out of the situation and no one's really you know uh, thinking about like well what happens to the person that is uh, that we're taking all of this from so I feel like there might have been a lot of takers there might have been a lot of opportunist people opportunistic people excuse me there might have been a situation where you know it, it's very snippy it's very um calculating it's um it's very low energy it can feel very very stifling um i do sense i'm hearing this now you're dealing with very selfish people you're dealing with very selfish people and i feel like you know the the libran person is all about the balancing act, okay? It's all about fairness. It's all about recalibrating. You feel very off kilter and, and unbalanced and wobbly in this environment because you're dealing with people who have very low vibrations, who are scrambling, who are in the midst of, you know, um, who complain that they don't have enough when they have a lot of resources at their disposal. Um, I'm hearing, you know, like sunfish. I'm hearing lazy. Okay, so excuse me. Um, I feel like you're dealing with people like this, and uh, they make excuses. Oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, I, I'm gonna call in sick. I don't want to be at work and have to handle that difficult case. So I'm gonna call in sick. And little did they know that, you know, if they call in sick, that case has to be resolved, and you're gonna have to send it off to somebody else. Right? That's not fair. And so fairness and balance and justice is, um, is, is kind of like your MO. That's what you thrive on. And that brings you, you know, uh, comfort and stability. And that's how you feel everybody should behave. But you're dealing with low vibrational people who are all about themselves, what they can get out of the situation, how they can evade responsibility, how they can, you know, um, one up on another person. And so it's an environment where, you know, like I said, that, that dust cloud, that the pollution, the smog, the, the congestion, all of it builds up and builds up and builds up. And then it creates like a major rainstorm, you know, really heavy torrential, um, like a monsoon coming through to kind of like stamp everything back down to the ground. Okay, put things in their place, put people in their place. I do feel as if, um, for, for some of you Libras, your temper might come into the picture, okay? You're like splicing through all this, okay? This is a sword energy, very well could be your energy. 
it's sort of like you know all this bickering this back and forth this um nonsense communication this selfishness this um you know opportunistic um all of these opportunistic like people and and situations i feel like you're coming in here with one giant sword and putting people in their place okay so i feel like you know that rainstorm stamping down the the pollution all the dust all the debris in the air and just bringing it back down back down to earth it's a very sobering moment for for the people especially if they have not seen your wrath if they have never seen you off kilter and angry and upset they're going to get the surprise of their life because i feel like you're coming in very powerful splicing through all these excuses and uh, the way that you do it is delicate but also very forceful okay and um, I guess that's like a, 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 an oxymoron like how could something be so delicate but also so, so forceful so what I feel is you're relying heavily on your wit in order to you know strike a, a chord with a group of people and I do feel like it is a group of people that you're dealing with who have been behaving this way you're setting people in their place you're not tolerating excuses and i feel like in the greater scheme of things you're just like you guys are very 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 balanced you guys are are, are like uh very non-confrontational okay um conflict avoided i i would say in in a lot of situations um it's only when you get in like interpersonal relationships that you really are very vocal about what you want and you're not conflict avoidant but i feel like you know in in a work environment in a social setting in a public um in a, in a public environment too you're very peaceful and you're kind of like the 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 um the voice of reason but i feel that the voice of reason is falling on deaf ears because you're dealing with people who purposely evade responsibility who are not operating at their best and um they don't listen to reason they don't respond to logic they're all about themselves and so this splicing through all that bs needs to happen because i feel like enough's enough okay so there's like something imploding something coming down uh, like the the wrath of the libra person is coming down and stomping the situation to the ground stomping and then you know um stomping with your heels and then really putting out a fire really putting people in their place really showing them that you're not playing around okay um if you are dealing with a sagittarius um definitely look at that video because um i'm getting a similar energy where it's like um somebody is like um getting a taste of the true sagittarius fury okay sagittarius is fire it's, it's all about like ethics and morality and um it's it's like a, a hot iron okay it, it strikes and it burns and it it, it like will uh, kind of like cut through anything standing in its way and i feel like with your energy it's very similar somebody i mean a group of people will be seeing your wrath for the very first time and i feel like it's going to set them in their place and they're going to remember this moment okay so this is one way in which the energy for mercury retrograde can be very productive because i feel like things come to light and i do sense that like people will be called out for 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 what they are pretty much okay so i feel like you're setting things right okay and you're doing this in the spirit of kindness or i'm sorry in in the spirit of fairness not kindness fairness it could also be kindness because you're just like that that's not fair for this other group of people who have been really diligently working doing their work minding their own business not causing pro problems helping one another and then this group of people who are just like jerks so you might be thinking you know I'm doing this out of kindness so that it doesn't happen again or you can be doing this you know just in the spirit of um balance fairness justice so you're dishing out karmic justice too i feel with a group of people okay 
Um, and I do feel like it's a group. I don't feel like this is a one-on-one -on -one interpersonal, you know, relationship type of an environment. I feel like this is a group of people that are childish and they need to be set in their place. You could also be dealing with children. You can also be dealing with, you know, a group of people that you're mentoring, coaching, teaching, whatever the, um, the environment is. It's sort of like putting people in their place and they will see and feel your raw power. Okay. So I have here the Knight of Pentacles. And um, the, the, the words that I got is like stopping all that the pollution and all the, those debris back to the ground, okay? And you know the elephant, um, they, they have really, really strong legs, right? Like they stomp on the ground when they walk through. So I feel like there is a situation here where you're literally stomping on the ground, packing things down, okay? Putting things down. Doing so in a very purposeful, noisy and just like no nonsense type of a manner okay and this is great and then with this card i'm also hearing that sound you know that that trumpeting sounds that the elephant makes and it's it can be very loud but it's not a high shriek okay it it's a, a lower octave but it gets its point across right like it's very undeniable like once you hear it and you're like oh that's the trumpeting of the elephant and so I feel like you're making your power known, okay? And so I feel like there's a lot of imagery here about, you know, noise and calamity and, and just, you know, being very firm and, and very strong, very um, um, commanding and just being very, very sure as to what you're stomping, where you're stomping and, and the noise that comes along with it. So this is typically not a Libran, you know, um, quality. You guys are very, very, um, I, I think of you guys sometimes as like the ballerina, you glide across the stage, okay? Very graceful, effortless. And just, you know, you, you don't run into walls. You guys are not technically, like, like, usually not very clumsy. You don't, you know, stub your toe and, 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 and hit the table and, and, you know, the cabinet and things like that. But I feel like for this month, it's like every, all, the, all of your actions are very directed towards a specific purpose, okay? So that's what I'm feeling here. And what I have here is, first of all, there is a eight of pentacles, a big pot of money, okay? And I feel almost like it's being divided. Um, uh, it's, it's divided into smaller segments or smaller portions. It's supposed to go towards um, a specific thing, a specific person. And especially, it's supposed to go towards the people that deserve it. Six of pentacles. But we have people here that are trying to get a piece of the pie. That are all fighting and clamoring for a piece of it and you're kind of thinking I don't know why you're fighting for it you don't deserve it you're probably thinking that and so you're trying to distribute these resources and you're trying to be fair you're trying to be just you're trying to balance it things out okay and so there's definitely um, finance related things coming into the picture where you're trying to be fair for some of you, this can be divvying up some type of an inheritance. You might be entrusted with that responsibility. And you know, money changes people. And so I feel like you might be seeing somebody behaving in a very surprising manner that is uh, unanticipated or you feel like it's out of character. But honestly, it's their true colors coming out because you know, money changes things. Money changes people, money changes situations, okay? And you're gonna start to see that sense of like uh, bickering greed um uh, selfishness coming out from people um especially in very unexpected ways mainly because there's a lot to lose here so i feel like some of you might be entrusted with the responsibility of distributing funds distributing bonuses distributing uh, resources uh dishing out um i'm seeing a lot of people uh libras who might be in a um in in an, uh, in a position of authority so like you may, might be managing people you're dishing out like um, you're dishing out like um, what is that word it's like evaluation for your employees you're like here's where you did really well here's where you didn't 
and then you know the the employee is like scowling because they didn't get a, a good evaluation okay but they deserved it right because you you see what they've done over the years or you you've seen their performance and you see them, you know, constantly clocking in, you know, late, leaving early every day. And so you're going to be very fair and very just. And then you're going to reward the people that are, you know, really great team players that uh, work diligently, that are hardworking, that don't whine and complain whenever they're and don't, you know, renege on their responsibilities. So I, I feel like there's a situation here where you're in charge of this pot distributing the good and the bad and I feel like you're you're doing it in a manner where it's like it's bringing you a lot of satisfaction to be in a position of power mainly because you feel like you're finally able to exact change in a work environment or in a, an environment overall where you're giving to people that deserve it okay so that's great good or bad you're giving to people whatever they deserve um, but I also feel like, you know, behind the scenes, you're definitely uh, divinely guided to kind of like, uh, it, it's like spiritual energy working through you to write a situation to balance things out. And so that's the, the first, the, the two images that I saw, and I'm sorry, I'm so tongue-tied, it's very late here, and uh, I'm getting a little bit sleepy, so I apologize if I keep stuttering and if, if I'm like stumbling over words, okay, just bear with me. So the, the, those two images are prominent here in, in the first six cards. So what I do feel though, um, the latter four cards, there is a message coming out. Um, I wrote it down. So I'm going to look at my crappy handwriting here and just give me a moment. Okay. Um, there was another message that I saw and it's funny because uh, it's a, a little girl going down a slide, okay? So she goes on top of the slide, she slides down and then the image stops and then it reverses. So like she, rather than sliding down, she's sliding up the slide. And when I saw this, I was like slipping up, the, the, the image um, was like speaking out saying like slipping up, slipping up. And so I feel like there's a person here in your environment who might be slipping up. And the Seven of Swords is all about, you know, uh, sneaky behavior, okay? Uh, the traditional meaning of this deck is like somebody getting caught, okay? Doing something they're not supposed to, lying, cheating, stealing, whatever it is, whatever vices that we're prone to. Somebody is definitely slipping up and getting caught, okay? And um, unfortunately, I do feel like it's somebody that... Um, I feel for many of you, um, you might have already been aware of this because you guys are very smart. You have a good judge of, uh, you know, you're a good judge of character generally. I feel like it's somebody slipping up. Um, they might have slipped up in the past. You give them a chance, an opportunity to shape up, and they slip up again. And I do feel for some of you, um, it might be their sense of loyalty that's coming into question, okay? So what I have here is the fool and I'm seeing this dog and I automatically think of loyalty, okay? Dogs are very, very, very loyal. You throw them something, they play fetch and they always bring it back, okay? They always come back. They have a big sense of responsibility. It's like, it, it's, it's, their, it's ingrained in their DNA, it's in their nature. And I, I definitely feel like somebody's loyalty is brought into question. And I feel like in a way, this is a recurring theme because um, I feel like this might have um, happened in the past. It was talked about, discussed, um, hashed out, forgiven, and then it's happening again. And so for many of you, this could be like a relationship partner. Okay, so I, I feel like there's there might be some truths coming to light regarding a relationship partner who is um, slipping up. And then I also feel like for some of you, this might be like a, a parental figure, okay? A lot of the times we think our parents are like, um, when we're young at least, we, we think they're like um, um, faultless, okay? We, we think they're perfect. And then as we get older, there might be things that, that they do, things that they believe in, and things that they say 
that makes us believe that you know, oh, mom and dad, they're just human. They're they're far from perfect, right? Um, I almost feel it, it's like one of those things. It, it's like a a person that you hold in very high regard. If it's like a, if it's not a romantic partner, somebody you hold in very high regard, and I feel the process of slipping up, they do something that is very out of character, and you're just like, I can't believe I saw that, or I can't believe they did that. So I'm, I'm seeing that judgment come in here, and uh, what I have here is the Nine of Wands and the King of Wands, and usually I think of this as like a, a family unit, right? Knight of Wands, King of Wands. So the Knight of Wands, when he gets older, he's going to become the King of Wands, okay? Uh, when this person gets older, they're going to be become a king or a queen. So we're not looking at genders. We're not looking at, you know, we're just looking at the representation of this energy. This is a younger energy, and this younger energy emulates this older energy. And the Wands energy deals with morality. It deals with, like, um... You know the sense of ethics what is wrong and what is right and i feel like somebody was just like oh this person is perfect you know when i grow up i want to be exactly like this person and then over the years and you know especially for the month of november you see them with their crown kind of like crooked they're they're caught doing something or you know you're made aware that they did something that was not very admirable and look at these eyes. This is like full of judgment. It's like, you, you did that? You know, it's like full of just judgment. It's full of like disbelief, I also feel. It's full of curiosity, wanting to question the other person, but wanting to be delicate. So I feel like there might be an uncomfortable um, situation here where you want to ask details. You want to know more but you don't know how to approach it in a delicate manner. And so things are like non-verbally understood between you and another person, even though it deserves a full conversation. So I feel like things, you might just leave things at that. Okay, so I feel like somebody's slipping up, you're made aware of it, and you're very surprised. You wanna ask them more questions, but you're hesitant because you are you want to be delicate about this situation. I, I also feel like it's a very delicate situation. It could be, for example, you know, you have a, a best friend who's married and you go to a bar and, on a date and you might see, you know, the best friend spouse with somebody else. And how do you, you know, how do you approach that topic? Like, what do you say? How do you even begin? Like, where does that conversation start, right? So I, I feel like it's one of those things where things are treated very delicately and there's definitely curiosity like you know I want to know I want to understand the story I want to know what happened but I can't really you know just come in and slice things up and, and expose it because it's it's a delicate situation that's all I can say um, you have a critical eye Okay, um, Libra, and, and I, I feel like that's a really, really, that's sort of like the, the saving grace of this reading. You're seeing through facades, you're seeing through people's um, veneers, you're seeing through people's excuses, you're seeing through the chaos. You're, you're, you're laser focused, and I, I definitely feel like there are definitely a lot of things that you feel feel you know um, before November oh I don't have all the information your gut instinct was telling you something is happening but you don't have all the information you don't have all the evidence you don't have all the proof and now you're getting your evidence I feel for a lot of you this is about um, like a, a workplace dynamics inner workings like office politics and things coming to light and you're you're becoming you know aware of it and then I also feel for others of you, family dynamics, people, you know, acquaintances, people that you respect slipping up. And then on the periphery of it, okay, there's definitely a situation coming back around, okay? Like I said, there is a, what is meant for you is going to come back for you. And I definitely feel somebody's coming back. Somebody's coming back. Um, I don't get a heavy relationship love type of a vibe but I do get it with the last two cards 
um, because I feel like there's a situation here where you're dealing with another person, possibly a fire sign, so Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, possibly another air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, or even like an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, okay? So that's pretty much all the signs, except the water signs. But regardless of who you're dealing with, there might have been a situation that you thought was done and over with, okay? Ten of Swords. It's done and over with. It's cut off. Uh, too much has been said. Uh, it's, it's also a delicate situation, too, where I feel like somebody slipped up and the other person, you know, called them out on it. So it could be you slipping up, they called you out on it, and then now the conversation or the, the communication is very awkward. Or it could be the other person slipping up, you call them out on it, and now the conversation is, um, the, the communication is awkward. So vice versa, whichever way, you know, wherever you stand. Um, you thought it was done and over with. And I, I definitely feel like it's, it's making a comeback. It's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. But this second coming, this coming back around, I, I get a lot of biblical phrases. Oh my gosh. And the image too, you know, the flood, um, washing away the sins and, and, and things like that. And then the second coming. It's weird. Um, this time around, I feel that there's room for improvement. There's room for change because that sense of love and loyalty is definitely there. Okay. So somebody is coming back. And then I also feel like, you know, you're anticipating the Five of Wands, the conflict. You might be conflicted within yourself. Do I take them back? Do I give this another try? Uh, have they successfully convinced me that their sense of loyalty has not sh been shaken? Am I convinced that, um, you know, the second time around is going to be better? But I, I feel like there's a coming back together. I do feel like somebody somebody has changed, okay, for the better. I do feel as well there was like a, a situation where if somebody really took a long time, okay, the pentacle suit is like, it's slow. If somebody took a really, really long time and to reciprocate, okay, somebody took a really long time to reciprocate. Somebody was mulling over this decision. I've got my, um, I, I've got, you know, my plate is full. I don't have the energy. I don't have the time. I don't have the resources to invest in this situation. I took too long. One person took too long. And, you know, Libras, you're uh, notorious for being very, very indecisive. But I feel like you had a lot on your plate. You were trying to do this right. You might not have communicated that you needed some time or more time or an X amount of time. And then the situation ended. And then one person felt very, very hurt. Five of Wands here. This is like bickering, internal conflict, external conflict, con uh, conflict between you and another person. I feel like it's coming back into the picture so it can be fixed. And this time, there's a lot more... The energy is a lot more clear and directed. And then with this King of Wands, this is like, you know, the, the pillar of morality, okay? Ethics and morality. So I feel like somebody's coming at you correct, and somebody is like trying to really work at things, okay? The kings, they're very admirable because they know how to roll up their sleeves and get their hands dirty to fix things, fix things okay? They got into their position of power because they know how to lead, and especially with this character, this person takes initiative, they know how to lead. Um, they're not, you know, in their ivory tower uh, dictating what other people need to do. They're right alongside their subordinates, like, um, you know, fighting alongside them. Okay? So I, I, I feel like there is somebody who's coming back around and they're willing to put in the work. And they're willing to make amends. And they're willing to do what's right by you. And so take, take that how you may. If this is a recurring cycle, however, I feel like, you know, um, the universe has a way to recalibrate, okay? Whatever is meant for you will come back for you. Whatever is not coming back for you, maybe it's just not meant for you. But I do feel there's immense um, reawakening here, revisiting, reviving a situation. And I feel like it has the potential to change, uh, to turn back around and to change around, mainly because of this 
um, you're starting off with really strong cards. This is like good karma coming back home to roost, as well as um, you know divine energies working behind the scenes in order to protect you and keep you protected and and not have anybody anything in your environment mess with your vibe. Okay, so. I'm going to leave it at that. I hope the reading finds you well, Libra, and I hope that it is helpful. I hope the messages uh, will be, you know, somewhat helpful as you navigate through the month of November, okay? So I will leave it at that. And if you're looking for a reader as well, I do have a link in the description box below for a uh, psychic. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California. If you are looking for spiritual guidance, I highly recommend that you get a reading with her. She's great. Um, and if you're interested in purchasing this deck, this is the White Sage Tarot. And I have a link in the description box below for the artist's website. And she has other goods for sale on her website as well. Um, I recommend that you give it a, a look-see as well. Okay, I will leave it at that. Um, I will talk to you later and take care of yourself. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving for those who, who are celebrating. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.